Hello, everyone. It's Song Ling here. I am a home cook, and I love eating. Welcome back to my kitchen. This is where I share simple, delicious, and healthy recipes that you can totally make at home. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe. I post every Monday and Thursday. So today my plan was to make chocolate chip cookies, but I forgot to take the butter out of the fridge in advance. And it's 11:30 at night. I really don't want to wait. So that's how I decided to make some brown butter. I mean, that's a legit reason to use liquid butter in cookie recipes, right? To start, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Cut one cup of butter into small cubes and add them into a heavy bottom pan. Keep the stove on medium heat. Your butter will get bubbly and foamy first. Swirl the pan constantly until the butter turns into a beautiful dark amber color and smells rich and nutty. This process takes about three minutes. Once it's done, transfer it into a bowl immediately to stop the cooking process. Set aside to cool. While we're waiting, let's prepare everything else. I will put the list of ingredients and amount in the description box below for your reference. Besides granular and brown sugar, I used two tablespoons of maple syrup as well for the added flavor. And for the chocolate, I used a mix of dark and milk. Feel free to customize the combination to your own liking. Two tips to help you achieve the right texture of your cookies. First, if you are measuring out flour by volume, the right way is to spoon it into your measuring cup and then scrape off the excess with an offset spatula. If you scoop directly from the container, the flour will get more densely packed and you can end up with 25% more than the recipe called for, which can have a significant impact on your baked goods. For brown sugar, however, you would want to press it firmly into the cup because of the moisture it holds. Once you get everything accurately measured out, mix your flour, baking soda, and salt together in a bowl and whisk until it's well combined. Now that all the prep work is done, time to bring out my shiny new stand mixer. Yes, I bought it on Boxing Day as a gift to myself because there was a big sale. And yes, this is the reason I decided to make cookies today. Don't worry if you don't have a stand mixer though. You can totally make this recipe with a hand mixer or just a whisk and spatula. That's how I used to make cookies and just consider it your arm workout for the day. Add the butter and sugar into the mixing bowl. Turn your mixer on at speed 2 and mix for about 45 seconds. Add in the eggs one at a time and mix at speed 4 now for another 45 seconds or so. Keep the mixer running and add in the maple syrup and vanilla extract carefully. Now add the dry ingredients in batches into the mixing bowl. On speed 2, mix for a minute or until you can't see any dry flour. Turn your machine off and scrape the bowl with a spatula if necessary. Now switch to stirring mode, dump your chocolate in and mix just until everything is well combined. For better shape and even baking, I strongly recommend you using a cookie scoop. Mine is a number 20 scoop that holds about 3 tablespoons of dough. If you have a different size, you might need to adjust the baking time accordingly. Scoop your dough onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. Make sure they are at least 2 inches apart and bake for 10 to 14 minutes. Take them out and transfer onto a wire rack to cool to room temperature. If you have leftover cookie dough, you can either scoop them onto a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, freeze them for a couple of hours, and then transfer to a Ziploc bag for long-term storage, or you can shape the entire dough into a log, wrap with SRAM wrap, and put it into the freezer. Cut into slices when you are ready to bake, no thawing required. 
This cookie dough does not spread very much during the baking process because, to me, nothing beats the satisfaction of biting into a thick cookie. That crispiness from the outer edge combined with that chewiness from the center of the cookie. It's one of my favorite combination of textures. However, if you do prefer your cookies to be thinner, just consider upping the amount of butter in this recipe. Also, brown butter adds so much depth to the flavor of your cookies and instantly elevates the taste. If you've never made cookies with brown butter, I'd strongly recommend you give it a try. Pour yourself a glass of milk and enjoy the seriously delicious gourmet cookies you just made. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe if you haven't. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave that in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.